It's bonus time. Let's wrap things up with a little bit of fun material. We've been using operators, applying them to do interesting, difficult calculations. But there's more to operators than this. There is, in fact, an entire calculus of operators featuring differentiation, but so much more. Let's do a real quick intro on this just to close the loop on this volume, set the stage for some of the things that we're going to do towards the end of Calculus Green. Here's an intro. Don't worry about the details, the specifics. This is really just for fun. Consider the following shift operator. This is a new one for us. This goes by capital E, the shift operator E applied to a function f and evaluated at an input x is defined to be f evaluated at x plus 1. So what the shift operator E does is it shifts the function over by one unit. If you think about what this does to the graph of this function, it's really clear what the shift operator is doing. Now, this feels a lot different than the other operators we've been looking at, the differentiation operator, the log operator, exponentiation, all these sorts of things. But it has some things in common. We can take powers of the shift operator. We can apply the shift again and again and again. What is the nth power of the shift operator? e to the n applied to f evaluated at x. It is f of x plus n. We've just shifted over by n steps. And this works for negative n as well as positive n. So in a sense, the inverse of the shift operator moves over by one in the other direction. And there's no reason why we have to stop with integer powers of this operator. What is the square root of the shift operator? Well, that's e to the one half, and that is shifting over by one half. If you do it twice, you get e. We can take any kind of power we want. We can take e to the h for any real h, apply that to f, evaluate at x. We get f of x plus h. We've shifted over by that amount. Does that look familiar to you? Hmm. Now, what the shift operator really means, how it really relates to calculus, oh, that's a deep story. But it's a great story. We can't do the whole thing, but we can do the beginning. The beginning is beautiful and consists of something that I call the exponential lemma. This is one of my favorite theorems. And it states that the shift operator, capital E, is e to the d. What does that mean? It is the exponential of the differentiation operator. Is there some fine print here? Yes, you need to have functions, one input, one output, with a well-defined Taylor series. Taylor series? Why does that matter? Oh, let's see. Let's do the proof of this result. Consider the shift operator E. Let's apply it to a function f and then evaluate that at an input x. What is that? By definition, that is f of x plus 1. Now, let's think about this from a Taylor series point of view, as has been so useful to us along the way. We're going to expand f about the input x. Doing so, we get that f of x plus 1 is the sum, as k goes from 0 to infinity, of 1 over k factorial, times the kth derivative of f, which we can write using the differentiation operator, capital D. Evaluate that derivative at x, and then because we've shifted over by 1, we're using that Taylor expansion formula where h is equal to 1. So we have h to the k, which is really 1 to the k. OK, great. That's what the shift operator is really doing. Hmm, that sum looks kind of familiar, doesn't it? What about the operator e to the d? What does that even mean? Well, when we apply it to a function f, evaluate it at x, we know what it means to exponentiate something. You take the sum as k goes from 0 to infinity of 1 over k factorial times that thing to the k. In this case, 
It's the differentiation operator, capital D. Now, we take that sum and apply it to F. Because differentiation is linear, this works out so nicely. We evaluate this at X, and then that's it. We're done. How does this compare to what we just saw with the shift operator? Well, the shift operator has that 1 to the K afterwards, but of course, that goes away because it's 1, right? Right. That means that exponentiating the differentiation operator, applying it to f, evaluating it at x, gives us, via Taylor expansion, f of x plus 1. It's the same result as the shift operator. Does it depend on the function f? No. Does it depend on the evaluation point x? Also, no. We have two operators that do the exact same thing. What does that mean? That means they're the same operator. The shift operator is the exponential of the differentiation operator. The differentiation operator is, if you like, the natural log of the shift operator. Do you like that? I like that. I think this is so cool. It ties together so much of what we have covered. Everything that you have done, everything that we have learned together thus far in this series is all part of a much larger story. Remember how at the very beginning we talked about what exponentiation means, what e to the x means. We transitioned to thinking about Taylor series and Taylor expansions of functions, about derivatives, what they mean, about differentiation, what it is good for. Everything that we have done from asymptotics to big O and beyond, there is so much in what we have done that all ties together, and it is just the beginning of the grander story of calculus that we are telling. There is so much more for us to see.